Hello everyone, I am Prasad from the Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about movement joints in structures. Before moving to the discussion, I would like to request you all to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You may get the notification on new videos. What is a movement joint? Movement joint is a kind of a joint we provide in the structures to allow to movement, allow for the movements. So this is basically provided between two structures or two structural elements. So we discuss about this in detail. Why we need movement joint? We need to accommodate the lateral movements due to the lateral loads in the structures. When lateral loads like uh, wind or earthquake loads apply on a structure, these structures will move. When there are two structures close by, then the either each structure should have a freedom to move it, freedom to move it free. So if one structure is hit another structure, there will be issue. Therefore, adequate gap should be maintained. This gap is depend on the design requirement. We will discuss this in detail. When, when there are irregular structures, we have to provide the movement joints. You can see here different kind of structures there. So this due to this irregularity, we separate these structures basically based on the structural arrangement. So here we may have a joint. Here we have a joint. Likewise, there may be a joint in the structures. Such in such situations, we have we need to have a movement joint. <coughs> Type of movement joint in structures. Movement joints in the foundations. Movement joints in the floor slabs. Movement joints in the beams. Movement joints in the bridges. These are the areas mostly found in the joints. Movement joints in the foundations. To accommodate the movement of the foundation, we provide the movement. When structures separately due to the irregularity, also we provide the movement joint. Foundation is separated by the movement joint. Generally, the width of the movement joint could vary between 10 to 25 mm. However, depending on the nature of structure, so for example, in a high rise building, then as I discussed previously, when there are lateral movements, so we have to accommodate that lateral movement. Depending on the lateral movement, the gap of the, this movement joint may be higher as 100 mm. It depends on the design requirement also. Foundation joints, especially when there are basements, need to be watertight. That has to be considered in the movement joint design. So you can see here in this figure, there is a movement joint. So when it is a basement <coughs> or it's when the foundation placed below the water table in such a situation there and also there are possibilities of water movement here we need to have a water bar here basically in this kind of movement joint we provide surface water bars like this we can provide water bar here also but it's it's better to have a water bar somewhere here as a surface water bar then water penetration can be avoided movement joints in concrete slabs as previously discussed also the gap of the movement joints in the slabs depend on the many factors if we have a foundation separations by movement joints same gap could be continued into the superstructure as well also the 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 gap depend on the movement of the structure so we have to calculate the what the lateral movement required then then accordingly we have to provide the movement joint in the structure Depending on the lateral movement of the structure or lateral deflection of the structure, we have to consider this movement joint. In slab movement joint, there may be different type of joint we provide or mechanical mechanical thing may be there, maybe uh, the filler will be there. If that is filler is in the sense it's smaller kind of a uh, smaller kind of a treatment uh, to the joint. It's like this. Now if we have a joint like this. So say this like joint like this, we can have a mastic filler or the flexible filler here. So to hold this filler, we put the backer rod there. This backer rod, this is a circular one, and you put the backer rod first, then you do the filling. This backer rod is a polystyrene material to hold this material there. So this this kind of a movement joint is the basic or simplest uh, joint that we use in the construction. Other than that, there are mechanical joint that allow the movement by mechanical systems those also can be possible in the construction or the possible in the structures movement joints in the beams 
they may be same as the same as the slab there may be mechanical movement or mechanical joint or other feeder type joint we may be consider <coughs> especially we have to consider here the when you have a mechanical thing the fixing arrangement to the beam because you can't stir the beam so so therefore we have to think about that when you consider the mechanical we move allowed movement joints something something like this not not the same thing if you if you want to fix this part into the beam so we have to be think with the reinforcement arrangement that arrangement can be fixed there that you have to think then second thing we are going to discuss about the bridge movement joint this is most uh, common uh, type of joint in bridge construction in continuous bridges we all see the joints so joints can be treated different different differently movement joints is provided in bridge to accommodate following things creep and sinkage effects of the bridge thermal variations uh, deformation and live loads allowable to allowing <coughs> to allowing lateral movement in case the seismic event so these kind of situations we need to have a movement joints in the bridges so that's it for the today we today discuss about the movement joint structures in buildings and bridges uh, and what sort of a movement joint should be there and why we need to have a movement joint we discussed today thank you very much for listening